So very good day to everybody. This is technological innovation in new media and continuing the last class we will discuss about clipping algorithms, line and polygon. Actually last class we discussed about circle. Okay. And uh, this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.chrisranan at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. Right. So in this class, we will go for polygon clipping, how you can clip against the uh, edge of the clipping area. Then we discuss about how you try to find the point of intersection of the edge with the clip boundary. We have a C++ program for the polygon clipping. Then we discuss about anti-aliasing, nothing but you are going to remove the noise from the images or maybe the video. Okay. Then we discuss about practical applications. Then finally we are going to end this class with the pixel phasing. Okay. So I had already given the animal and work for you. Please complete them. We have approximately four weeks. Okay. So this is polygon clipping. Actually, we are going to draw this. Uh, you know the image okay and we are going to take the vertex list okay so the convex polygon and convex clipping what we are going to see okay so here we are going to clip the polygon edges okay so this is the edge we are going to take from the Sutherland Hartman algorithm so especially for the polygon clipping you will be following this algorithm so here the input we will be taking the vertices in the clockwise order okay so let us take in the case the input polygon 100 150 200, 250, 300, 200. So here we will be taking this clipping area. Okay, so that's actually a square. Okay, so that will be like 150, 150. Okay, 200, 200, 200, 150, and 150, 200. So that's actually a square that you are going to point. Okay, so here we will be ca categorizing the vertex list corresponding to the edges. Okay, so this is the example as I told you 100, 150. 200, 250, 300, 200. So this is the clipping area. So this, this one, okay, it's a clipping area, and you are going to get the output corresponding to these points. Okay. So you are going to clip against the edge of this clipping area, which means that you are going to infinitely create a boundary, and you are going to join the vertices across the boundary. Okay. So the new vertices, it's uh, across the clockwise fashion okay until all the edges has been used guys guys right so we will have different cases okay like both vertices can be inside or maybe first outside second inside or maybe second inside first outside or maybe both are outside okay so let us take in the case both vertices are inside which means that you have to add only the second vertices okay. So first word is, is outside, second is inside means you will be having a point of intersection. So one will be inside, other will be outside. So you will be having the point of intersection of the edge with the clip boundary. And second word is you are going to add to the output list. So second you will have first vertex is inside, second is outside means the point of intersection of the edge with the clip boundary is only added to the output list. And both are outside means which means no vertex you are going to add to the output list. So here we'll be having, you know, the clockwise order as I told you. Okay. So the given the line uh, starts from x1, y1, and maybe x2, y2. So here you find out the distance. Okay. So x2 minus x1 multiplied by y minus y1 minus y2 minus y1 multiplied by x minus x1. So if the point is less than zero, the point is in the right side of the line. Okay. Point equal to zero means it is lying on the line. Point greater than zero means point is lying on the left side of the. So here we have a formula, okay. So that is nothing but the point of intersection P X comma P Y. P X generally because we had the points X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So this is the point of intersection. X1, Y1 minus Y1, X2 multiplied by X3 minus X4 minus X1 minus X2. X3, Y4 minus Y3, X4 divided by X1 minus X2, Y3 minus uh, Y4 minus Y1 minus Y2, X3 minus X4. If you can observe, the denominator is the same. But only the numerator you are going to change. Okay. Uh, comma x1 y2 minus y1 x2 y3 minus y4 minus y1 minus y2 x3 y4 minus y3 x4. So denominator in both the cases will be same. Okay. 
So here it's a C++ program for implementing the Sutherl and Hartman algorithm. So using namespace std function, you are going to initialize the maximum point to be 20. So here you are going to return the x value of the point of intersection x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 and x4, y4. Then you are going to have the formula. Okay. So x1, y2 minus y1, x2. So this actually is taken from this one. Okay. So from this one only you are going to find the point of intersection. So x1, y2 minus y1, x2 multiply by x3, x3 minus x4 minus x1 minus x2 x3 y, uh, y4 minus y3 x4 so the entire thing the numerator function you will be uh, defining then the denominator function okay x1 minus y2 uh, multiply by y3 minus y4 this one minus y1 minus y2 multiply by x3 minus x4 okay and you are going to return numerator divided by denominator instead of uh, you know single function you are going to split it into two functions okay then you return the y value of the point of intersection so y intersect so you define and you categorize the formula numerator this one denominator this one and you return numerator divided by denominator then you are going to clip all the edges okay so y clip in polygon points okay and size x1 y1 x2 y2 okay so you define the new points and the uh, polygon size equal to zero you are going to initialize so you will have the i loop for int i equal to zero i less than poly size i plus plus then you form the i as well as k that's a line in algorithm so k it's nothing but i plus one modulus i x and then k x then for the first point okay with respect to the clipper line you will specify the i position so x2 minus x1 multiply by y minus y1 minus y2 minus y1 multiply by x minus x1 so that is how you specify the initialization point and the position of the first point with respect to the paper line okay. then similarly the second point same way you are going to have then the four cases you will have both are inside one inside second outside first in uh, one outside second inside then fourth both are outside so for this one when both are inside okay so the i position less than zero and k position less than zero then the new points new polygon size equal to kx then ky then you are going to increment it. Then first point is outside, second point is inside. So else if i position is greater than or equal to 0, k position less than 0, then you find the point of intersection. So the new points you are going to categorize and you increment it. Okay. Then you specify the new points to be equal to kx and new points to be equal to ky and you increment the polygon size. Okay. Then case 3, when second point is outside, first point is inside. So else if i position is less than 0, k position greater than or equal to 0. So if in this case we are going to add the to the output of the vertices. So new point, new polygon size of 0 equal to x intersect, okay. And you specify the y intersect and you in increment the new polygon size. Fourth case, both are outside, which means that you are not going to add any point to the output vertex, okay. So you are going to end this one, okay. So copy the new points into the original array and change the number of vertices. So polygon size is equal to new polygon size for int i equal to 0, i less than polygon size, i plus plus. You specify i 0 equal to new point and i 1 equal to new point of 1, okay. And you implement the algorithm, okay. So here you are going to have y Sutherland Hartman uh, clip, okay. So this is actually predefined okay so that is actually available in the c++ so okay so that is the advantage you will have okay so in polygon points in poly size in clipper points in clipper size okay so that's nothing but the two consecutive indices for int i equal to 0 i less than clipper size i plus plus then you will have k equal to i plus 1 modulus clipper size pass the values clip the points you will uh, specify and you print the vertices of the clip polygon so this is the driver code in polygon size 3, polygon points 22, 100, 150. So what and all we discussed in the start of the class, so that points you will be having. So this clipper, you, you will be specifying the clip, okay. So clipper size is equal to 4, clipper points, okay, you are going to specify and you are going to have the calling function, Sutherland Hartman uh, clip, polygon points, poly size, clipper points, clipper size. So that we will be returning what is the exact value for example okay so for this one what is the point here what is the point here what is the point here 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 
so that it will be specific go 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 so that it will be specifying the values so anti aliasing as i told you you are going to remove the noise in the filters so that is how you are going to remove the aliasing effect okay so aliasing effect of course it's nothing but noise you are going to remove the noise okay so the problem of the jag edges you are going to uh, identify due to the distortion of the image so that one maybe you can go for the scanning conversion definitely if you are going to sampling at low frequency so if you are going to sample at the low frequency which means that you can perform the under sampling technique so aliasing occurs when whenever the real world objects whenever you are going with will be having most of the errors okay or it is not having uh, you know uh, smooth curves or maybe smooth edges and that is the reason you are going for removing the noise in edges okay so cause of anti aliasing you can call it as the under sampling and under sampling will be having loss of information of the picture okay so whenever you have loss of information the image or maybe the picture is not properly reconstructed okay so under sampling occurs whenever the sampling is done at a frequency lower than the nyquist sampling frequency okay so fs is equal to 2 multiply f f max so that is nothing but the sampling frequency and here the nyquist sampling uh, interval at the del x is can be calculated as del x cycle divided by 2 so here del x cycle is divided is nothing but 1 divided by f max okay so maybe you can also remove this anti aliasing using high resolution display or maybe after filtering post filtering method like super sampling method you can do or maybe pre sampling uh, i mean pre filtering you can do like area sampling or maybe pixel facing also you can do okay so also you can go for high resolution display as well so that's how you are reducing the aliasing effect and maybe you can increase the sampling rate so as to increase the resolution okay so maybe if you try to go for high resolution means the jag is also like the problem also the noise is also will become small so uh, the human eye cannot be able to differentiate or distinguish it okay so here the jagged edges okay the problem will get blurred out and maybe the edges will appear smooth okay so here the retina displays you can go for apple uh, devices like o led displays as well definitely it will be having higher pixel intensity so which the jaggies will be so blurred enough and the eyes will not be able to differentiate or distinguish it so in the method we will be increasing the sampling resolution okay so which means that you are going to confine it to more fine grid as well so that is how the pixel size will be reduced okay but the definitely your screen resolution will remain the same okay and this is how we do sampling at higher resolution and we try to display the image at lower resolution or maybe the resolution of the screen so this is how you go with super sampling so you can actually uh, go for uh, optimum sampling resolution and definitely you can uh, generally ignore the jaggies okay so this you can call it to be the post filtration method as this procedure is done after generating the rasterized image so here in the case of gaming like maybe super sample uh, anti-aliasing or maybe full scene anti-aliasing so that you will be obtain the best image quality so this you will go for anti-aliasing technique definitely it will be slow but definitely uh, it is going to have higher computational cost as well okay so the technique was earlier used uh, in uh, widely okay when better uh, aa techniques were not available okay so there are different modes of super sample anti-aliasing like 2 point 4 points 8 times uh, 16 times and so on okay so this is how the sampling is done like x times more than the current resolution okay so better style would be multi sampling anti-aliasing so that's uh, naturally very faster and of course it is having uh, approximate style of super sampling as well of course it is having lesser computational cost than the pure anti-aliasing and then we will have pre-filtering so here we will be utilizing in the area sampling where we will be having pixel uh, intensity that will be calculated proportional to the areas and here we will be overlapping across each pixels with the objects okay so here the pixel color is maybe computed based on the overlap of the scenes objects okay so for example a line passes through two pixels means the pixel covering the larger portion maybe 90 degree i mean 90 percentage 
that's having more intensity than the 10 percentage covering pixel okay so 90 uh, percentage is definitely greater than the 10 or maybe 15 percentage intensity then you'll have pixel facing will be summarizing so if the pixel area overlaps with the different color areas so the final pixel color will be taken as the average of the colors of the overlap area so this you can call it as the pre-filtering technique which is done before generating the rasterized image so it can be done using graphics primitive algorithms as well and generally pixel facing you can use this technique to remove the aliasing and you can shift to nearly approximate positions near the object geometry and some systems will be allowing the size of the individual pixels to be adjusted for distributing the intensity so generally for uh, pixel facing uh, it will be very much uh, helpful it's a very useful technique in order to remove the aliasing.